If you're jumping into precision farming for the first time, it can seem pretty daunting, so let's break it down. Hey crew, it's Matt from the Farmhouse Guys. My favourite topic in precision farming, also known as error correction, is probably more of the complicated aspects of precision farming. You need to know a little bit more than your average smartphone user. And the reason for this is that prices vary, equipment varies, and also the outcomes used with these different error corrections vary. So yeah, my favourite topic. Standard GNSS, similar to what we see in our smartphones today, is accurate to approximately 5 to 10 meters. Now, when it comes to precision farming, 5 to 10 meters mm, just doesn't cut it really. This is where we need error correction and we need improved accuracies. Basically adding an additional GNSS signal that improves our original one. The very first and most basic is what we call autonomous. And it's not really an additional signal, but more of a filter. The good news is that it is free, okay? So it's built into every receiver. Though it's free, as you would expect, it typically has the lowest accuracy. Usually just around the sub meter mark. So autonomous can do the job perfectly for certain applications. And again, we'll break into more details about those applications in later videos. However, it's still limited in its overall application. So the way it works, Autonomous uses a built-in filter in that receiver, and that filter is working to model and remove the potential errors in GNS signals your receiver is well receiving. It's essentially a fault detection for your receiver, ensuring that it is using the most accurate GNSS signals that it can. And that's it, that's autonomous, pretty basic. The next and probably um, the most scalable solution in error correction is what is known as satellite-based error correction. Another name for satellite-based error correction is DGNSS. And this is an error correction, as you would expect, coming from the satellites. This is introducing a differential, there's the D, satellite signal source, which is used to correct the standard GNSS correction, allowing accuracies of up to 2.5 centimeters. Pfft, blows my mind. Harvester driving 2.5 centimeters? Mate. I'm impressed already. With satellite-based error correction, the satellites used aren't the same type as the ones that are used with the GNSS. We call the satellite-based correction ones geostationary satellites. Okay, so they are stationary fixed in one place versus the GNSS satellites, which are in constant orbit. So when you subscribe to a satellite-based error correction, you are subscribing to connect to these geostationary satellites. Starting off, everything looks the same as an autonomous signal. We have the same hardwares and tracking the same GNSS satellites. However, we've now introduced that geostationary satellite. The geostationary satellite, though it's a satellite, isn't that clever. It's essentially just a mirror to broadcast the computed error correction. Now the real clever part is computing that error correction. And to do that takes a load of ground reference stations and some algorithms that I can't even explain. But these ground reference stations, usually owned by the correction provider, are able to process the errors from GNSS signals because they are stationary. They have a known position. They are not moving like the tractor or autonomous filter is. And this is the key for error correction, which you will learn in the next type. All that's left to do, once we have these error corrections from the reference stations, is to upload the computed corrections to the geostationary satellite. And we ping it to the geostationary satellite, and boom, you have your correction once your tractor or your receiver connects to that geostationary satellite. I'm saying geostationary a lot, and it's very difficult to say. So that's it, that's satellite-based error correction. On to ground-based error correction. Now this stuff is cool. 
So ground-based error correction is synonymous with RTK. RTK stands for real-time kinematic, which indicates how the signal works itself. Today, RTK, or ground-based error correction, is the most accurate correction signal in precision farming and in agriculture today, and also construction. The way it works is based much on the same theory as satellite-based. However, the processing is done a little closer to home. Ground-based error correction requires what we call a base station, which is the correction source, and also a radio or modem, which is the correction receiver on the rover side, or the moving target, let's say, which is your harvester or your tractor or your farming equipment. So how does it work? Well, the starting point is always the same a receiver on your machine, and GNSS satellite signals. With RTK, we then introduce that base station. The base station can be in a fixed format, or it can be in a mobile format. But the key is that when that base station is working, it's stationary with a known position. That allows it to generate its error correction, much like the reference stations in the satellite-based uh, error correction method. Okay, so we have the base station generating its error correction because it's in a fixed location. We need to get it to our machine. With satellite-based error correction, we use the geostationary satellites. Obviously, we don't have that option with RTK. What we do have, though, are either a radio or a modem. So radio frequency or modem, which is connected to the internet same internet that our mobile phones use. Very clever stuff, we'll go into more detail. Now our machine is connected to our base station, either through radio frequency or through the modem using the internet. That's pretty much the job done. With RTK correction signals, you pretty much get accuracy like that. So that's basic error correction used in precision agriculture today. Needless to say, there is a load more to learn on the topic and we will cover more on it across our Precision Farming Fundamentals series. Go check it out to learn more, guys. In summary, improving your farming efficiencies doesn't need to be complicated, and we're here to ensure that. So thank you very much. Please drop a like on this video, subscribe, and leave a comment. We love a chat on this stuff. I can geek about it all day, and I'm here to answer any of your questions. Thanks, guys. Bye.